everyone. Hi guys. Welcome to Bari, where we have just landed. This is Mima and Peter. Maybe From you already all know us. If not, it's so nice to meet you. We're gonna spend five days here in Puglia, if I'm not mistaken with the pronunciation. I always say Puglia, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, first step is that we need to pick up our car. So let's go and we're gonna show you everything afterwards. Right after the exit, we have managed to find Italy Car Rental. This is our rental company, this is where we're going to rent. We paid about 160 euros for five days, which is about 32 euros per day. We use this company, which is called Economy Bookings Voucher. I've used them many times before and they have by far the cheapest prices. And while I'm waiting, Mima is just putting some stories. Managed to rent a car, so let's now to collect it and let's see what we got. We have been walking for about 15 minutes. <laughs> no, 15, maybe 5 minutes. And we're still not there, but you know what? I'm in Italia! <laughs> <laughs> I hope the weather gonna stay like this because the weather forecast says it's gonna be rainy all the time, even in Monopoly, Matera, Ostuni or Lecce. But I'm still manifesting the good weather, so wish us luck that we're gonna have a beautiful time here. Otherwise, we're gonna spend all the time in the restaurants and eating because we are in Italy. <laughs> so we have the vehicle type, Corsa, Benzina. I hope it's this one. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> So let's check it for any damages cool, cool, and cool, cool. apparently if it gets stolen we're gonna pay 1,600 euros and if it gets damaged then about 1,500 euros. So let's go to the, our first accommodation where? In Monopoly. So see you in Where Monopoly. I'm singing all the time like all the way. <laughs> Let's go. We are driving through the Italian uh, roads. Uh, we are now in Bari, which is the capital of this region. It's about 350,000 people, so it's a medium to large city. And we are going to Monopoly. It's about 46 minute drive. The roads are quite nice, no issues whatsoever. Welcome to Monopoly. After about 46 minutes, we've arrived here and we found what? Free public parking, which is unheard of. This is the location, just for your tip. Our accommodation is in the old town. It's forbidden to drive there. We have to stay here, take our stuff and go, which is about 200 to 300 meters, maybe half a kilometer. So this is the place where the cars are forbidden to enter and this is the entrance to the old town. And it's quite beautiful, you have some restaurants right there, you have the city walls, nice and lit in the evening, little streets and ruelles, and you have the ocean right over here. It's probably the Adriatic Sea. The ocean. After about five minutes into the old town, we have arrived to the, our first accommodation, which is called Bella Vista Sur. And let's go in. So, are you excited about what's going to find inside? Hello. <laughs> Hi. Should I open it? Yeah. Oh. Thank you. So Nice to meet you, I'm Leah. Hi, nice Hi, to meet you, nice Peter. Meet you, Leah. Do you need help with luggages? No, yeah, no, no. It's okay. Somehow. Okay. <laughs> okay, please. Property boasts about four suites and it has a beautiful terrace. I haven't seen it yet. I will show you everything. This is the room. It's done in a typical... It's number two. The room number, number two. Number two, yeah. It's done in this typical, I think, Monopoly fashion. Everything is beige. It has high ceilings. You have this rock. Um, used in the construction. So and do you like uh, it? Yeah, I, I mean, I love it. it. This is my style. This is absolutely my style. And the colors and the high ceilings and this bathroom with jacuzzi. And actually we have a stairs here and it, it leads to the roof terrace. I already been there. And this is the terrace. Wow. What do you think? Yeah. 
Great. And we have our own private pool that opens up onto the ocean. Oh, wow. And we're going to watch the sunrise right here because this is the this east. This is the spot. Look there. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> you know the song, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, now let's go to eat. Pizza, pasta, cannoli. <laughs> let's go. So as we promised, we're going to show you a little bit around this evening. We are going to one of the best restaurants here in Monopoly. It's called Piazza Palmieri. Two minutes walk, but uh, let's go. I'm not sure which direction. <laughs> Look at this beautiful little street and everything. And now this place opens up onto the Palazzo Palmieri, which is right over here. There is big church and this place is so magical. And this is one of the best restaurants right here, which is called Piazza Palmieri. And Mima is right there. We're gonna have something to eat right now. So we have just ordered and Mima got, what did you get? Spaghetti, like pomodoro, with cheese and tomato sauce. So how do you rate so it? So hot! <laughs> mm, amazing, delicious, yeah. And I got something like a gnocchi. ragu gnocchi with some sort of bacon. Yes. So let's eat. <laughs> how was the dinner at one of the best restaurants in Monopoly? It was so delicious. Actually, we had like one big sparkling water, two main courses, uh, one souffle, chocolate souffle as a dessert, and we paid 44 euros. Let's go back to our apartment and get ready for tomorrow's shooting. Good morning, it's the day two of our epic trip. You definitely have to experience this play. We are just having a breakfast. It's overlooking the sea. It's so gorgeous and beautiful, you cannot imagine. We just, uh, we are so mesmerized by the mornings we are now having right here. And the hosts have prepared a breakfast for us and Mima is enjoying them to the fullest. After our healthy breakfast, we are now heading to our first destination, which is called Polignano Amare, which is supposed to have one of the most beautiful and iconic beaches here in the region. We, it's about 10 minutes away from here and the beach is called... What is the beach called? Lama Monacci or something like that. I don't know. So sorry for the, our Italian viewers. It's probably spelled differently, but anyway, we're doing what we can. So what are your feelings about this place? We just came, so <laughs> I have no idea. Exactly, we just came, we found the parking. Apparently the white spots are free for everyone to park and the blue ones, you need to pay for them. So now we are going for the cliffs. The beach is called uh, Lama Monacille and here it is. It's gorgeous and beautiful. I think that's a drone, for sure. And we need to get to those rocks for us to take some photos and witness its beauty. And these are the stairs going down and down onto the rocks. And from here, I think we will get the best view of the beach. We have spent about 20 minutes here. I was doing some drone shots. We were doing some pictures. It's an amazing spot. It's beautiful. You just sit here, relax, enjoy the ocean, enjoy the spring. It's really stood up to its name because it's such a gorgeous beach nested in this little valley. And then you have this overlooking uh, cliff with the, with the city. It reminds me of Corsica, of Bonifacio almost. So it's definitely massy here in Puglia. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, definitely recommend here coming in the morning because in the morning the sun rises over there and it brings the sun and the light uh, onto the city and uh, the colors are reflected beautifully here with the sunrise light so definitely a sunrise location not the sunset but definitely if you come any time of the day you're gonna enjoy and relax everywhere on this coast it's actually sunrise location because it's uh, east side, so think about it when you're creating content or taking pictures or videos here, you're gonna enjoy really beautiful sunrises here. During the daytime, the Adriatic Sea is absolutely beautiful. It's full of turquoise hues and it's just gorgeous. Too bad it's too cold for us to jump in, otherwise I would have. 
Okay. Apparently, this place features a, a no, room a balcony with a private the pool. <laughs> oh, Here wow. Here is the key. If you need to go on and off. <laughs> so you can actually enjoy swimming and sleeping at the same time. What a room, huh? Yeah, I mean... Do you like it? Yeah. Who can say that you sleep like, like right next to the pool inside? <laughs> and look at the writing. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh my god. We should have stayed here, huh? <laughs> I've never seen a room like this before. Have you? No. <laughs> well, well if you're staying so here cute. in ha Bella Vista, show? then maybe you can book a room like this as well. And that's the bathroom. It's really tiny and small and very cute and it opens up onto the pool that's pretty cool huh so you can uh, go to the toilet and watch your partner swim <laughs> <laughs> Just checking in to our second accommodation here in Monopoly, which is Playa del Mar. It's a boutique hotel, and we're gonna show you everything right away. So let's go. So this place is about about half a kilometer away from the city center, which is that way. So there is a lot of free parking. So fortunately, we are parking right here next to the hotel, which saved me a lot of problems with the luggage. So come on in. <laughs> This is where we're going to eat some of the breakfast and look at the decor again. We see the same finishes as in the previous accommodation, very Mediterranean, very Pulian. And this is the room. This is our master bedroom. It's yeah. almost been done in a way that Mima's heads fit right exactly onto the walls. <laughs> she loves the design, we love it all white. But then we're gonna show you something really beautiful, which is the terrace upstairs. There's about six rooms in this property. Five. Five rooms in the property, and we have it all to ourselves because nobody will check in until four o'clock or five o'clock. So this is all for us. There's a beautiful pool, azure color, white color. You have this little tables where you can eat the breakfast. You have these little umbrellas, sunshades, and you have these little pens where you can enjoy your afternoons and right over there is the beach very nice and clean and we just love it so if you ever come to Monopoly these two are some of the best places to stay in here and one thing we didn't mention is this private pool it's heated so you can use it any time of the year because in the winter it gets really cold and it's nice and beautiful, overlooking the ocean. Just love it. Maybe we'll jump in here in the evening. This is our first lunch in Italy. We are in Porto Rosso restaurant, which is a pizzeria. So let me taste the margarita. <laughs> mm. Wonderful. Thank you, God, for this wonderful Italian gift. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm speechless. You have to taste this. It's 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 really, really, really delicious. And in the back, you can see the old city of Monopoly. And I love the view. So right now we are just spending our afternoon here next to the pool, chilling. And our hosts have prepared the floating breakfast for us. Yes, it's not only in Bali, but also in Italy they do the floating breakfast. And here is Mima, happy about having some fruit, catching a little bit of colors. Everything I like. <laughs> oh. After our harsh winter, we haven't seen sun for four months. So we are basking in the sun right now and it's really beautiful. Totally recommend this place. Come over and enjoy such luxuries. We have just embarked from Monopoly and we're heading to Albero Bello, which is about 30 minutes away from Monopoly. Our chill out at the pool was really amazing. We got a nice uh, rest and now let's explore some of the more specific things in the region. 
Albert Bello is known for the specific houses. There are little kind of like gnome houses. The little people used to live for dwarves, kind of magical creature, <laughs> whatever. I don't know why they are built. We're gonna discover that at the spot. They're really uh, specific to this region. They cannot be found anywhere else in the world. So they let's are go. They're called truly. They're called truly. And because they are, they are truly, truly amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to rain, as you can see, as promised. And on... just drizzling a little bit. Well, we can survive that. But hopefully, uh, when we get there, it won't be raining too much and we'll be able to explore more. We are just parking at this spot in Alderbello, which is called Parque Guillo Centro Storico. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. For... Here in Pain Side. Uh, no. No. We have just parked our car and we are paying six euros. I just asked if it's for a day or for a few hours. <laughs> and the guy said that, so I suppose it's like <laughs> for the rest of the day. Uh, we're not gonna sleep here. We are coming back to our recommendation in Monopoly, but we wanna explore a little bit of Alberbello. It's really beautiful and pittoresque and it's unbelievable that people used to live here. Well, some of them still do in these little cottages and houses. So one of the customs they do over here that the, the roofs are made of this special local stone and on the top of the, uh, of the roof they uh, draw some sort of sign pertaining to religion or good luck. You can see some of those over there on the top. So I want to talk to you about the true history behind these structures. They were originally built not using any mortar, any connective cement. They were just using hewn uh, rocks that were stuck on top of each other and for the roof they were using the special local stone. Because in the 15th century a nobility or whoever collected taxes, they were taxing the the households. So they were building these structures in such a fashion when the tax collector arrives they would just disassemble the entire structure and take off and say like well I'm not paying any taxes because this structure doesn't exist. Clever way of tax avoidance. We waited until the evening. They turned the lights on at 7 30 but it started to rain so we are running to the car and we are soaking wet. We are back to our accommodation. Finally, we're so tired after the entire day. We have done everything today. We've done Monopoly. We've done Poliano Amare. We've done... Alberobello. Alberobello, there you go. So you can do all three in one day. It's not a big deal. They're really close to each other. And I must say the last one really caught us by surprise because we got completely soaked and wet. But it's so worth visiting. I mean, it was beautiful. Um, take about one to two hours, just walk the streets, uh, go to shops, uh, eat something. It's really beautiful and uh, definitely uh, something worth seeing in your life. So we are back to Mokumnation and tomorrow morning we are going to Matera. <laughs> so that should be something. I heard so much about it. So thrilled to get to see it tomorrow. Good morning. It's our day three in Monopoly. Actually, we are still at Playa del Mar. We are going to have a breakfast right now. We've got some eggs, ham, cheese, fruits, brownies. We're waiting for our coffee. And afterwards, we are heading towards Matera, which is not located in Puglia, but it's something you cannot miss when you're going to southern Italy. So we're gonna go there. It takes like two hours by car to get there from Monopoly. So let's go eat and then we're gonna show you everything else. We have just arrived to Matera and we're trying to find a parking spot. The white lines should be free of charge and the blue lines are a paid parking spot. The hotel where we're gonna stay told us to find something here. So we are trying to search for a place, but unfortunately we cannot find anything. Probably we will need to park our car in a garage. I think the price for parking here is like one euro per hour, which should, shouldn't be such a deal. We have just arrived to Matera and we are parking in the public parking in Piazza Se Firao. 
it's about 24 euros per day and any additional day is 10 euros now we have to walk for about 10 minutes and a half a kilometer because it's a restricted zone and we cannot enter with a car so let's go for the track and this is how I manage things Hima takes the heavy bags and I'll just enjoy the city Looks like Mima has reached the end of the world and she doesn't want to go. So uh, I'm having the first view of the old town right here. I just have to scale these stairs right here. I mean, going down maybe should be quite easy, but going up it's going to be more difficult. It's quite a walk down there, especially when you are left with carrying the bag. It's about 100 steps. Mima is, of course, already in the hotel. I'm not in the hotel. <laughs> I have one bag that's about 14 kilos on my back. And this thing is about 24 kilos because of all the heavy stuff Mima packed for winter season here. Not a comfortable situation. I need some rest. But hey, look, it's so beautiful. After scaling the stairs, we should be getting to the place. And we have reached our final destination, which is Palazzo degli Abati. An exclusive accommodation we totally recommend. And let us do the tour of the accommodation once we, once I catch my breath. We are having our second breakfast of dreams. The hosts have prepared for us this wonderful table full of local specialties. And in the background is this beautiful city of Matera. We cannot wait to go and explore it. We are lucky because it's sunny, but it's supposed to rain at one o'clock. They have umbrellas, so that doesn't really for many things. Bucket list place and wow, I mean it's like I imagine Matera totally different, a little village somewhere, but it's so scenic, so beautiful. I mean it's it's so many cute little streets and you can just get lost and explore this city. And you can see there is like a little valley over there. It's like a little the scenery is amazing. It blew our mind. After our healthy breakfast, we have been given the room. Each room has its own name and its own history, which is really cool. This place is also part of the church. So let's go to our own place, which is called Ui Mam. Actually, this room has been also continuously inhabited well, for a very long time. In 1955, there was actually an old lady living here and she was very helpful to the Rand community. Afterwards, this place has been converted into the hotel. This is Matera, but the, the old town is called Sasi, which means rock because of its, its very specific, its UNESCO heritage, because all the dwellings are caves. So people dug out caves into the limestone. You can see the seashells because this area used to be an ocean. And also they claim that it has been continuously inhabited since, I don't know, 9,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago. So some of these families and their ancestors used to live in the same places for about 9,000 years. I'm so excited about discovering this place, living in a cave, just like the old times. But we have all the modern amenities that one can wish for. We have toilets and running water. <laughs> which is pretty cool. I've never stayed in a, in a hotel where the particular room had such a long history. We have got the map and we're going to explore the city a little bit. Actually, it's divided into two parts, Sasso and Sasso, the other one. <laughs> this one is more ancient. Yeah, so we are basically here and we're gonna do the tour around the city. It should take like one and a half hour maximum, two hours. And there are a few photo spots we wanna visit. The first one is actually here. 
the second one is here and the third one is here but we are also gonna stop here in this church because there should be a really good spot for taking pictures during the sunset so we want to see if it's something worth visiting or not and we're gonna take you with us so let's go it's so incredibly beautiful everywhere we are now walking through Sasso, Sasso Barisano, which is the most modern part, which actually features some buildings and less of the caves. And on the other side of the hill, there should be it's called Sasso Caveoso, which is the ancient part yeah, featuring all the caves and where people actually lived for those yeah, 8,000 like, years. And they're still living till this day. There is about 3,000 people remaining in the city because there was a huge uh, movement of people in 1955. Matera itself is about 60,000 people and uh, back in the days there used to be 18,000 people. Now the population is down to 3,000 people because the dwelling conditions are not ideal. It's always sort of wet in these caves yeah, and humid and um, there is lack of sort of shops and uh, infrastructure and pools and so it's really difficult to live here but for those that remain here it's quite an experience so this behind me are the ancient dwellings the caves you can actually walk down over there if you see and you can there is a track and a little bridge and you can climb all the way up and go explore those caves and you get magnificent views of the old town of the uh, Sasso Cavioso which is the old part over there which is the most ancient part of the of the city uh, we are going to the first spot which is right over here so apparently this is one of the most beautiful spots here in the city it's next to Piazza San Pietro Cave also and it overlooks the old city we are staying on the other side of the mountain and we feel the other side is more beautiful than this one but it's still stunning the real beauty of Matera is that diversity it's such a huge and spacious place and every corner has its own surprise just like this little cafe you can drink coffee or a tea right surrounded by these rocks so it's a true rock city and it's incredibly well crafted i don't think i've ever seen something like this ever in my life we are just finding ourselves at piazzetta pascoli which is located here so we have come through all the way from here until here and we still have a few minutes walking ahead of us uh, this should be one of the best few spots here in matera i think it's really beautiful but still the one we have from our hotel is better. I don't know, what do you think? What's your favorite spot? What do you think? Strong Piazzetta point? Piazzetta Pascoli. I think it was really beautiful, but still the view from our hotel is better or at the same level, I would say. So you have two really important, I think, and beautiful photo spots which is here on the <laughs> top over there over here next to our hotel which is where this one yeah this is our hotel is this one and, and the second beautiful spot is over there so those two are a must go and must see and after all that walking we are so hungry so we are having our dinner at annunciata restaurant Mima is having traditional spaghetti, pomodoro. pomodoro, and I'm having a pizza, so a classical Italian dish. And it has a really nice view of the old city over there in the back. So we quite like it. How is the spaghetti? Amazing. <laughs> We are just having breakfast, it's day four of our trip. Um, we have been creating some content on the rooftop of the hotel and it's gonna be amazing. So if you wanna see it, just click here. This is our Instagram account and we post most of our content over there. 
so check it out and we are having this wonderful breakfast here we have enjoyed our this place to the fullest and I can say it's probably the best place with the best view in Matera so if you want to stay in this place we totally recommend it our time here is drawing to an end and, and now it's time to head to another location another city which is Lecce it's gonna take us like two hours to get there by car so let's go <laughs> we have spent the entire morning here at this location shooting a beautiful video and check it out so what do you think let us know in comments and this is the one of the best views if not the best view of the city and this restaurant is probably one of the most scenic one with overlooking the entire old city and from the best side this restaurant or cafe even if you are not accommodated here in the hotel so we recommend to come here and have a coffee or some snack and enjoy this beautiful view of this oldest city in Italy and now it's the worst time because with all the luggage and no car we just have to walk the old city with about 50 kilos of Vimas clothes <laughs> that's not true but yeah he's carrying the bag now. I love when we travel like this me carrying the heavy backpack and Mima carrying the uh, the light bag. <laughs> the very light version of a backpack and now I think we have to turn right so this is the way to the Sassi and uh, you don't have to look at me because I don't know what she's looking and this is the way to the parking to Fornaci by the way if you want to stay at the place where we just stayed one night is Be careful. going between 200 euros to 350 euros it depends, depends on the room, room they have many different rooms one with the caves but they are also the luxury, room. luxury rooms yes so there's a lot of variety you can choose from now oh, let's go <sighs> now we have to pay for the parking which is we need to insert the license plate right over there as per usual and it's gonna be about ta -ta 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 -ta, 20 euros for the parking which is not so bad for one day given that in Rome you would pay up to 40 to 50 euros all paid let's go